Hiya. <laughs> okay, we'll go right to questions for the student athletes. Please raise your hand with your questions. Right here in the front. Uh, Tanner Rounds, you know, two radios for Jayla. Every game now could be your last one in a uniform. How do you play with that mindset? Or do you just put that in the back of your mind? Is that something that you play with now? And, you know, obviously you don't want it to be your last game, but how does that, you know, kind of impact your performance or even just your day to day while you go through this tournament? Um, I think that. You know, every game that I played this season, I've tried to play like it was my last game and just leaving it all on the court, you know. I feel like, you know, this game shouldn't be any different. I try to go out and just always play with as much passion and as much fun as I can and just enjoy living in the moment and try not to think too much about the future. Uh, Luke Blaine, Daily Athenaeum. This one's also for Jayla. I'm sure you noticed yesterday during the game uh, your little sister kind of <laughs> stole the show a little bit. Um, so... On top of that, you know, with this being your final year, what does it mean to have your family there with you through this experience in the NCAA tournament? Um, it means everything to me. You know, my family have been like my village ever since I've picked up a basketball. So just to have them here, and you know, in these big games, under the big lights, just knowing that they're here to support me means everything to me. Aaron Parker, U92 Radio. This is for Kylie. Um, Coach Kellogg all year and last night talks about wanting to get to four four scores in double digits or at least three. Um, Lauren and Kai didn't really get many looks yesterday, so did you feel the burden to kind of, like, hey, I need to try to get double digits or do my share um, because there wasn't going to be four in double figures? Um, I don't see it ever as being, like, a burden or anything like that. I think that we all play so much for each other that it's just if there's, like, somebody struggling, somebody else needs to help pick it up. And we're always there for each other, so I think it's more a question of being together than anything. Yeah, this is for Kylie. Um, there's obviously a lot of talk about Iowa's guards, but I'm wondering, as a post player, if you could talk a little bit about what you know their post play and what you guys may be able to do to have some success against them inside. Um, I think that this is just like, they are a complete team, so I think that Everybody has to be ready to play. It doesn't matter if it's a guard, a post, either way, we just all have to come ready to play and fight. Go ahead. Uh, this one's for Kylie. So Coach Kellogg talked about how there's kind of been a buildup for you for a good while as to kind of like hitting your stride and playing. Do you feel like you're kind of finding your flow? I mean, you were a big part of that run yesterday uh, that gave you all the lead in the second in the second half. So does it kind of feel like you're hitting your stride and your play at the right time? Yeah, I definitely feel like I'm getting a little bit more comfortable in everything with the system that um, Coach Kellogg's put in play. Um, but I also think a lot of it comes back to our team. They've always believed in me throughout the whole the whole year, so I think that that's something that speaks strides to being comfortable. Further questions? Towards the back there. Joe Picado, West Virginia Metro News, Jayla. Was it, you knew coming into the year this team had potential and could do some good things. Was there a point midseason where you really thought that this team was capable of getting to the stage that you're currently on? Any particular game or any stretch of games during the year? Um, yeah, I definitely. I think that I had, you know, my doubts in the beginning. You know, like everyone with a new coach, new teammates, everyone was kind of, you know, skeptical at first. But I think that we all kind of bought into the system and just kind of bought into you know, each other and just kind of played for each other. And I think that, you know, going into each game, knowing that you have, you know, 13 other girls behind you willing to go to war and go to bat for you is it really speaks volumes. Up here in the second row. This is for both of you guys. Can you, Coming, excuse me, can you identify yourself? Uh, Aaron Parker, U92 Radio, uh, WV Student Radio. Um, you guys were both here with Coach Blitz White last year and Jayla, you've been with Coach Carey. Puts White and now Kellogg. What made you guys want to stay here at West Virginia and not maybe jump ship because times were getting tough and you knew you were going to have to adapt to a completely new person and a, a completely new system? Uh, I think for me personally, just being you know in West Virginia when I first committed, I didn't even know where West Virginia was, <laughs> um, but, you know, finally being able to go there in person and just being able to see the environment and see, you know, the fans and how everyone there was so welcoming and just embraced me, um, it really 
put a lot of, you know, it was a big factor in my decision. Kind of go off of that too, it's, West Virginia is such a community. Like everyone there has your back no matter what. So I think that that's something that's huge. But also like Kellogg, he had a plan coming in and he met with all of us and talked about it. So I feel like he really eased a lot of us. Front row here. Uh, Tanner Mounts, U92 Radio. Um, you, you touched upon West Virginia's fans, and obviously you, know, you saw them yesterday. Some of them traveled, but you're about to play in a sold-out uh, arena that's going to be a very large portion of Iowa fans. Is there any arena this season that you've played in or anything that's given you any kind of anticipation for what you're about to be walking into? Go ahead, Jalen. Um, I would say... I'm trying to think. Big 12. Yeah. It's Pretty a much. Bit. A lot of the Big 12 teams that we play, especially like, let me think. Kansas. Kansas, especially, like playing in a gym like that historic. And, you know, it, it seems small when it's empty, but when it's when it's fans in there, it definitely is a different, <laughs> different atmosphere. So I think that just being able to, you know, stay locked in and just focus on the bigger mission and not get distracted is just big part, part of, uh, you know, helping us out tomorrow. Further questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Welcome back. Good to see you again. Yeah. yeah. So it's always a good thing right now, right? Yeah, it's good to be here. <laughs> good to be seen. Yeah. All right, we'll go right to questions for Coach Mark Kellogg. Please raise your hand with a question. Susan? Susan Harmon, HawkFanatic.com. Coach, when you, you came, you uh, Jordan came with you, sort of, uh, and there was already an established star there in JJ. Um, how did how did they sort of work out uh, how they were going to do things in the backcourt? And, and they have become a, a great tandem. So I, I wondered how that developed. Yeah, um, kind of naturally, honestly, and a little organically. Um, I wasn't quite sure. I know Jordan was super excited to play with JJ and, and the talented kid that she was. And then we later found out that JJ had looked up Jordan and watched some of her film and her stats and was equal, equally as excited to play with Jordan. Now, I didn't know exactly how the pairing early on would go. Um, both can handle the ball, both can lead the team. Um, JJ being a, a, a big time scorer, I thought Jordan could take some of the ball handling load off of JJ. And so we kind of decided to move JJ a little more off the ball, at least for most of the game, um, you know, when it gets late, we can kind of mix and match and play off of both of them. But, um, you know, their ability to, to defend and, and on the ball, they're ball hawks defensively. They both love to do that. Um, yeah, and, and super talented in their own right offensively. So it's really been a great fit. I, I mean, they're smaller. I didn't know if we could get away with two smaller guards like that at this level. Um, but no, Jordan really picked up where she left off a year ago at SFA and has just been a fantastic addition. And, and JJ was already elite, but I'm glad we've been able to allow her to kind of take off and shine. Kyle Huseman, Hawkeye Report. Um, haven't been able to watch a lot of you guys this season, but you guys seem like an aggressive team defensively, both half court and full court. Just how would you guys describe the way that you guys like to play defense, and how do you think that'll, that'll match up against a team like Iowa? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've been aggressive by nature, and, and steals and turnovers has been our MO for most of the year, and probably even led the country for the vast majority of the year in both of those categories. Um, you know, and, and so, yeah, we just, we, I think we're really good defensively. We just do it differently than a lot of people. Um, you know, and a lot of people, I think, when you press, they think you play fast and just go score points, and that's not really what we do. Like you saw last night, we can grind out games if we need to. If we need to play a little bit faster, I think we have the capability to do that. So you get in Iowa. We played Oklahoma earlier in the year, who would be a, a somewhat similar to Iowa and how, you know, how fast they play and the pace in which they play and how elite they are on the offensive end. So, you know, yeah, we're aggressive by nature, but, you know, we're not the biggest team either. We don't have a ton of size, so we have to kind of make up for it in some of their areas, and, and that's kind of been our strength. Go ahead sure. the back. Joe Picano, West Virginia Metro News. Mark, you and your staff are the only staff, first year staff, to get a team to the second round this year. What are the unique challenges with coming into a program first year and kind of melding together a roster that's about half and half newcomers and returners? Yeah, no, that yeah, that's a that's a good one. Um, didn't know that, um, but yeah, super excited about where we are. It has come together probably quicker than most people, I, I guess, would have thought. I don't know about in our locker room. I think we. We thought we had a chance to be pretty good and to be pretty good early. Um, we, we set goals that we wanted to be in the postseason. We wanted to advance in the postseason. Um, I said that in the press conference on whatever that was, April 5th or 6th a year ago. Um, and, and here we are advancing and in the tournament and, and, and you know played in a fantastic lead that prepares you for opportunities like we got last night and then we'll have tomorrow. So yeah, really proud of the group and the buy-in. Um, and they've just, it's the collective group in that locker room that really is just tight knit. Um, we had six returners, seven new ones, and so it was really a battle of who would kind of, how could we blend this, um, and how quickly could we blend it? And really, by the end of the summer, that thing was blended, and that team was clicking um, from a locker room perspective. Uh, Tanner Mounts, U92 Radio, Coach. You know, now that you've had the night to kind of recuperate and start to prepare for Iowa, what are some things that you've seen from them outside of the obvious that maybe you know the whole national media sees that they do well, or maybe some things that you could take advantage of as well? <laughs> yeah, well, um, well, what the national media and everybody sees is what they do really, really well. Um, it's the the most elite offense, um, you know, in the country, the the best offense I've seen since I've I've been coaching and. Um, you know, and, and they're special because they have obviously the, our game's greatest scorer, you know, man or woman leading the charge. And then they have put the right pieces around her, um, you know, and, and I think Stolke's playing really, really well. 
Uh, I think Kate Martin is phenomenal. Like, and I'm saying glue as in the greatest compliment I could give her because I think she just does everything for that team. Um, and, and the other kids, Gabby knows her role. Those kids know what they know what they're doing. They're veteran. They have been here. Um, Coach has done a phenomenal job for many, many years here. So it's a well-oiled machine. And so I think for us, we somehow have to try to get them to leak some oil, I guess, in some some way and, and find a few things that, um, you know, we can take advantage of. Um, you know, we probably need them to have a little bit of a bad shooting night and, and not shoot it so well and, and slow them down at times. Um, but, yeah, no, this is this is elite, as lead as, of an offensive group that I've ever seen. Uh, Luke Blaine, Daily Athenaeum. So everybody knows about Caitlin Clark, the scorer. But, you know, she was two rebounds away yesterday from having a triple-double. So how do you go about preparing for somebody who just all around makes an impact on the game? Yeah, I think it's probably her assist that, you know, more than the rebounds um, that scare you. If they were offensive rebounds, that would be one thing. Um, you know, defensive rebounds for her can certainly lead them in transition. But I think, you know, when you're talking about an elite scorer that's averaging 30-plus, but nine-plus assists as well, that's so many more additional points that she's creating for her team. And so that's kind of the pick your poison, I guess, if you can find a way to do that, is do you try to make her a scorer? Or do you try to make her a facilitator? You know, what's the game plan going to be? And so we'll, we'll continue today and tonight and into tomorrow to try to figure out the best way to, to somewhat slow her down. But that's about all you're going to – I mean, she's going to get points. She's going to get shots. We know that. Um, just we need to make it as hard as possible um, on her and their team. Yeah, Coach Mike Vogel from ESPN.com. I'm, I'm sure you talked about it a lot this year, but it's somewhat rare that a team has a first-year coach two years in a row the way West Virginia did. How did you sort of, I guess, get everybody in line with, hey, I know there's been a, a lot of change around here, but – you know, I'm, I'm here to stay, and this is what I'm doing. And just sort of, I guess, win, win the trust of the players in that way. Yeah, no, that's not an ideal situation at all, right, to come in and, and be the third coach in three years. Um, and, and I've actually done that one, uh, one other time in my career when I took over, so I had a little bit of experience. Um, but honestly, it was – West Virginia was a really, really good fit for me, first off, for Coach Kellogg, the way we play, you know, the, the hard work, the blue-collar, coal mining community, so passionate about – you know, they're, they're mountaineers, um, you know, just across the whole entire state. And so it really fit us. It fit my family. And then from the player's side, so Mike Carey was the coach, right? Longtime coach, so much toughness, defense, pressure. Um, and then Don Plitza White took over, and that's motion offense and half-court man. And so I kind of came in and combined a little bit of both of those identities. So it kind of meshed a little bit. Um, we could get out. Those kids that were recruited by Mike Carey wanted to get out and defend J.J., J.J. Quinterly has set out to be the all-time steals leader at West Virginia. Like, that's the one goal she gave me when I got here. That was it. That was the random number that, sh that she wanted. And Jayla Hemingway and those kids that have been here wanted to play that way. And then Don added some motion offensive kids, which, you know, we tried to kind of start that way too and run some motion. And, and maybe we've gone a little bit away from that as the year's gone on. But it just kind of blended um, from the on-the-court play. Um, I've always played the same way with the press and mixing defenses, so that wasn't new for me. Um, didn't know if our team would pick this up quite as quickly as it did, but it just fit, um, and it really fit early, and then they've just kind of taken off with it. Aaron Parker, U92 Radio. Speaking further on that, when you were still at SFA, um, when Rim Baker offered you to the job, did you see players like Jayla, Kaya, and JJ potentially returning and think, wow, they can really fit into my system? Is this, you know, maybe a match made in heaven? Is that what you were going through when you were still in Texas? Yeah, and I had watched film on them through that process. And while you're interviewing, you're trying to study and see what you're walking into. And, and certainly I knew those kids fit really well with what we did. Um, you know, thought I kind of – I thought they would come back, but you never know until you get there and we get to know each other and, and they see the vision or at least can, can have an idea of what that vision looks like once I, I painted the picture for them. But, no, they were pretty much all bought in. That group really wanted to stay together, wanted to do something, you know, like they're doing, do something special. Um, you know, and so proud that they're getting rewarded, you know, because they did choose to stay. And this day and age, a lot of them don't make that choice. And so really proud that that group chose to stay and be Mountaineers. Kyle. Kyle Huseman, Hawkeye Report. One to, to follow up on my first question. I was a team that's first in the country in assists per game and third in the country in assist to turnover ratio. How do you kind of balance uh, your guys' aggressiveness on defense and not be overly aggressive because you're facing a team that, that can really spread the ball around and a lot of really good passers? Yeah, no, that, that will be the challenge. Um, 
without giving too much away, I guess, um, that, that you got to try to slow them down. And slowing them down means slowing the ball down. And that's, I think, what you're alluding to is how quickly they move the ball. So your defense moves as the ball moves, of course. And so if we can slow the ball down a little bit, that gives us an advantage. Um, you know, I think we've got some speed and quickness that can certainly help do that. Um, but yeah, you've got to slow the ball down. You've got to slow their ball movement down. Um, otherwise, yeah, they can just start to pick you apart. And you know, when they get going and they get clicking, it's, it's, it's pretty fun to watch. Not to prepare for, but fun to watch. Question in the back. Yep, Andrew Grudy, MSN. You talk about a team that has had three of its five starters, three coaches in five years, in Jayla's case, four and five. Um, and you've said at points this season that this team gets along so well, you're enjoying the season. What makes them blend so well? Is it a sense of humor? Is it shared purpose, knowing that it's sort of about the whole instead of just the individual? Yeah, well, yeah, good question, Andrew. I think it's a little bit of all of that, um, to be honest. It is uh, it is a close-knit group. Um, egos have been pretty much set aside, um, not really concerned with, with who's scoring the points or getting the assists. It's a um, very unselfish group. Um, yeah, they just genuinely enjoy each other. We don't have really any big, huge, strong personalities either, so I think that's where you kind of get that even keel nature. Um, you know, it's probably relaxed me a little bit, which is why I said I've had so much fun this year. Um, because there's just, you know, we've just been able to kind of flatline. And, and I mean that every day we go to work. I've kind of joked early in the year I was fighting them because our practices were boring. We had no energy. I'm like trying to get them going and they're not meeting me there. And so it was more like, Coach, relax, like we got you. Um, it just wasn't who they were. Same thing in games. We'd get in a timeout and maybe they're on a run and I'm trying to get them going, telling them it's not good enough. And it was just always like giving me that look. So it's just relaxed me, allowed me to kind of just sit back to and enjoy it and trust them a little bit. And so I think there's this mutual trust. Again, that's something that's hard to gain quickly um, today um, with kids and, you know, coaches. And sometimes it takes a little while. Um, but I think we got that. We got past that pretty quick. Susan. Susan Harmon, HawkFanatic.com. Um, Kylie really sort of intrigues me. Um, can you, what is her position? And she told me that she's really played different positions under all the different coaches she's had. How do you sort of visualize her? Uh, what, what do you use her for? Yeah, I guess if you wanted to define a position, she doesn't really play the one that we would probably should or should define her as. Um, you know, but we just, that was the option that we had. That was the best option that we had when we started the year. Um, you know, we've started the same lineup every game the entire season, which is just unheard of, um, I think, too, um, for the most part. But Ky Kylie is a forward that we just play, you know, that we play, like, I guess, as a five, if you want to put a position on it, but that's not really what she is. So she guards the other team's five, but, you know, offensively, that's not the way she plays. She's more of a forward that faces up, can shoot it, put it on the floor a little bit. Um, but she's she's gotten a lot more confident in the last probably three to four weeks. I was happy for her last night to have you know to get to double figures and hit a three, put it on the floor. You know she can run. I mean she's a runner. Like I have a, like she was getting shin splints in the fall. She trails in Morgantown and she'd take her dog and go running after practice several miles, and we'd have to tell her to just like you can't like you can't do that. Your body's you know gonna break down. But that's the kind of work ethic that she has. I see her in the gym quite a bit. Comes back in there um, and gets shots up. Um, so you know position. I don't, we kind of in a, offensively, I don't care what position you play. We, you know, work to a skill set defensively. You got to guard somebody. So I guess she guards the five, but offensively, we just allow her to play, you know, that are, as her skill set allows. Front row here. Uh, Tanner Mount 292 Radio. I uh, asked Jayla this earlier. Uh, you know, you're about to play in a sold out arena. I think it's like 15 and a half thousand. Um, you know, is that, how do you prepare a team? to walk into that kind of environment. Is there an arena in the Big 12 that you've played this year that's kind of helped you prepare for that? Or how do you go about that? Well, we, no, we, well, yes and no. We have not played in front of 15,000, so that will be new. It will be loud. Um, we understand that. We have played in some loud venues. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe when you get to a certain point when you're at 6,000, 7,000, it's loud and you can't hear anyway. So if it's 15 and it's loud, you're still not going to be able to hear. So, you know, you work th through some of your nonverbal cues um, with your team, you know, things that you don't have to vocalize that you can do with hand signs and things like that. So, you know, we'll talk through that um, a little bit to make sure we're prepared, um, you know, and, and then hopefully somehow we can attempt to take the crowd out of it in some capacity. 
um, you know, defend and hopefully they're not making shots and, you know, doing as best, you know, best of a job that we can to just try to, to somewhat limit the noise, but, um, you know, that's going to be hard to do and, and it will be rocking. I mean, there's no doubt, but man, what, what a great experience. What a, if you're a competitor, like this is what you live for, you know, if our team, I think they're be super excited for this and just what, I mean, just what a great atmosphere. I mean, this is as good as it gets right now in, in women's basketball and any basketball. And obviously, as we've said, it's the last game for, for the senior group that's just had a phenomenal career. And I don't know what it was exactly like when they got here, but I don't think it was like what it is right now, if that's fair to say. And um, man, that's, that's pretty special in women's basketball to see what they've done. And, you know, I was telling our staff yesterday when I was at that Holy Cross game, like sitting down there, I was like, man, I would love to have one of these in Morgantown at some point, like this would be pretty, pretty special for us in our program to get something like this going. Um, and, I, and I think we can, um, but certainly they've done a phenomenal job here. Got time for one or two more. We'll go right here to the front. So, you know, obviously in your first year with West Virginia, first time in a Power Five uh, conference, could you have imagined a year ago that you would be in this situation, you know, getting ready to, obviously it'll be all eyes on wherever Iowa goes in the tournament. So could you have imagined a year ago that, you'd be here in this situation in the NCAA tournament? Uh, I mean, yes and no. No, I, I never allowed myself, I guess, to like go this far or think that this moment and we'd be right here in Iowa City and, and all, everything that's gone with it and, and Caitlin announcing that she's, you know, going pro and so this will be it for her. So no, that piece, absolutely not. Did I have a vision that my program could get to the postseason? Sure. Um, do I think we could win a game? Yeah, probably, um, you know, maybe not this quickly but uh, sure hope that it could happen. Uh, but yeah, again, this, I think it's special. I think we, we need to take it in, but understand at the same time our season is on the line and there's a lot that comes with that, but understand where we are and who we're playing against and the environment that's, that they've created here is, man, that's special. And that's a really, really cool thing for our kids. It'll be an experience and a, and a memory they have the rest of their lives. We do one more question here in the front. Yeah, Coach, if I could just ask you sort of a big picture question in terms of your first season in the Big 12, um, travel is, not, it, it's hard for West Virginia. It has been since they, they joined, being an East Coast school, I guess now. UCF is a fellow East Coast school. Mm -hmm. But next year you're going to have the Four Corner schools come in. I'm just wondering what your thoughts were on being part of the conference and how do you think the conference going forward is is going to continue to be one of the you know one top conferences in the women's game? Yeah, no, it, I, I loved every second of it. You're talking to a guy, though, that came from the WAC and – Nacado in Nacogdoches, Texas, and we were on a commercial flight, so we had to drive two and a half hours to Houston or Dallas and get on a commercial flight and fly to Seattle and then play and then play an afternoon on Thursday night, play an afternoon in Riverside, California, or vice versa, and then take the red eye home, you know, after you get home and you get back Sunday at 9 a.m., you know, so Big 12 tra travel from Morgantown wasn't wasn't so bad, um, you know, relative to other schools in our league, though, yes, and I know that's the question you were asking, is yes, we are a geographical outlier, um, you know, with a few other schools, um, but man, it, it was fun, I think it prepares you, um, I had played several of those schools and those venues, so from a coaching standpoint, I thought we, you know, we would be okay, um, you know, and, and watched plenty of the Big 12, because that was kind of my footprint, um, in Texas, but um, yeah, no, so I thought it prepared us. Um, I think it will be equally as good when these, the four corners, as you said, schools come in. Those are some great women's basketball powers right now. Um, big 12 went 7-0, and I think, in the first round I saw. Um, so big time props to the Big 12 and what they did um, those first two days in the, in the NCAA tournament. Um, so yeah, so it's a, it's a gauntlet. And I think what helps you is there's so many different styles in the Big 12. And, and so we've had so many different types of game plans. When you get on some of these shorter notices, maybe we can at least go back and recall something that, you know, we've already talked about or a team we've already played against because the styles are so different. You get size and post play at some places. You get speed and quickness at others. You get athleticism with some schools. So really, I feel like we faced a lot of different types of teams um, that prepare you for these opportunities. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Our next uh, press conference will be at 2.15 with Iowa players.
Okay, we'll get right to questions for Caitlin Clark and Kate Martin. Kyle? Kyle Huseman, Hawkeye Report. Um, kind of want to hear both of your answers on this one. Just what are your initial thoughts on, on watching West Virginia? Looks like they play a pretty aggressive style of defense, both half court and full court. Just kind of curious to hear what you guys have seen from watching film on them. Yeah, I, they're, they hang their hat on defense. Um, they're a really good defensive team, and they try to turn you over, um, full court press. And we've seen a lot of teams do that to us this year. But yeah, they're definitely going to try to speed you up and want to turn you over. And so uh, that's how they um, get into their offense, really, is they turn defense into offense. So we're just going to have to stay composed and handle their pressure. Yeah, like Kate said, they're going to want to turn us over. And that's exactly what they did at Princeton last night in the third quarter. And I think that was kind of the point in which the game changed. They're one of those teams that really feeds off of turnovers. One turn turnover can turn into five for for a team. So um, I think that's going to be the biggest thing is taking care of the ball. And um, we expect them to play some zone, play some man. Uh, that's what we're prepped for. And um, it'll be a good battle. They have good guards on their team. They're long. They're athletic. Um, so I think the biggest thing for us is going to be taking care of the ball. Uh, Luke Blaine, Daily Athenaeum. Caitlin, uh, you know, you spoke a little bit on the guard play from WVU. Um, a big part of that is JJ Quinterly. Um, what have you seen from them as a whole, but also on her in specific as a player and a defender? Yeah, I think their guard play is, is really where they thrive offensively, and um, that's going to be something that we really focus on. I think, you know, JJ specifically is somebody that really is going to put her head down and want to get to the basket, and um, I think that goes for all their guards, and that's kind of you know, what they hang their hat on. They're capable shooters, but I think they want to drive first and create opportunities there. Um, so we'll throw a few different things at them. And, um, you know, they're a really good team. They run some really good stuff. Um, you know, we've been prepping for them for a few days, going through their actions. And um, I think that'll be the biggest thing. And obviously, she's a great defender, too. They're all good defenders, uh, one through five. And being able to handle the pressure and not l let one turnover turn into multiple turnovers and then start stacking up. And I think just staying patient and running our offense and running our stuff will be really good. Uh, in the middle back, Scott. Uh, or, I'm sorry, go ahead. Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports. Um, from both you guys, just dealing with the emotions of the last home game. This is going to be it. Oh, geez. <laughs> Why'd you say that? No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, it's definitely bittersweet. And um, I feel really grateful to have extended my time into six years and have gotten to play a lot of games out here on this court. And I feel really grateful for that. And so uh, just staying in the moment and, you know, we can uh, – Deal with that after the game, but first we're obviously focused on um, getting a victory tomorrow and um, just enjoying every single moment with our teammates, you know, trying to have fun out there and uh, smile a lot and just play some basketball. But yeah, I, th I don't think it'll hit me until, you know, the season's really over. But, uh, you know, I feel lucky that we've gotten two extra home games on our home court here. Yeah, what she said, I would echo all that. And I think the biggest thing is just being grateful. Like, how lucky are we that we get to play two March Madness games on our home court in front of our fans and never letting that opportunity pass us by. And like Kate said, like, it's all business. We're going to be locked in. Like, I don't think any of us five seniors are really going to be thinking, like, oh, my gosh, this is our last game. I think it's, you know, the environment is too competitive. You're wanting to win so hard. That's not really what you're focused on. And like she said, I feel like that is something that will hit you either after the game or once the season ends. And um, yeah, but I think more than anything, like we need to use the crowd to our advantage. Having 15,000 people that want to cheer for you, that's, that's huge. Thanks. In the middle. Hi, Scott Docterman with The Athletic. This question's for Caitlin. Uh, to your left is uh, Kate Martin, who you've played with for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. what, what's, how has she impacted your career at Iowa? Mm -hmm. in, in what ways? And then also Iowa, University of Iowa Athletics. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I think the thing about Kate is like, she's been somebody that's been here with me like through it all. And it's kind of crazy to think about like when I first stepped on campus, Kate was like already a captain. She was in her junior season, like she was two years older than me. She was somebody I admired and looked up to and then somebody that became one of my best friends. And I think everybody in our locker room and even the coaches would say she's somebody that we all learn from every single day. Somebody that always has our back, somebody that is one of the best leaders you know, any of us have ever been around. And I think the coaches would even say that. I feel like the coaches have even learned a lot from Kate and how she goes about her business and what she does on a day-to-day -day basis. But, um, like, I don't know, like, I'll miss, I'll miss playing with her. Um, I mean, she's just somebody that has really been there for me. She's somebody that's wired the same way as me. And at times that means me and Kate butt heads. But at the end of the day, we know, like, how much we love each other. We get out, step off the court and it doesn't matter. Um, we just make each other better. But I think... 
I think for myself, the thing that I'm going to miss the most is just being around her every day as somebody that's one of her best friends. She's one of mine, and um, it's been fun to see her evolution as a basketball player. Um, I think, you know, to me, she's a pro. She's somebody that should be drafted. She's somebody that can offer a lot to a professional organization, and if not, she'll make a really good coach one day. So I've been very lucky over the course of my four years. Thanks, Kate. Aaron Parker, U92 Radio. This is for both of you. Um, Harrison and Quinterly on WVU's side, both top 15 in the nation in steals per game, respectively. Mm -hmm. Does that guard play remind you of anybody in the Big Ten, or do they seem to pose a completely different threat? Oh, I definitely – I feel like with their press and their pressure, it kind of reminds me of Penn State a little bit. Um, but it definitely reminds me of Georgia a little bit from last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, they like to go back into their a zone after their press sometimes. And so, uh, I don't know. I, I just think they're really active and they like to put ball pressure and they just kind of want to get in your face and intimidate you. And uh, we're just going to have to really stay composed and handle that, and, you know. And if people are doing that to you, then there's, you know, counter options and we're going to have to take advantage. Yeah, I would, I would say the same. I think within the Big Ten, they, they kind of remind me of Illinois with really good guard play um, at the guard position. I think also additionally with the way they press, I would say Ohio State, those two teams kind of combined. Um, but they're, they're unique in their own ways. Um, I think they run a lot of good stuff. I think they have, you know, they rotate quite a few post players in and out of the game when all those post players are kind of unique in their own way. Some can shoot, some don't shoot as much. Um, so I think the biggest thing is knowing our scout. Um, you know, it's easier when you're in the Big Ten and you're really familiar with teams and you get in these situations and you have a couple days to prep for a team like this. You really got to know your scout. You got to watch extra film. But um, like I said, really good guard play. Um, you know, they're going to want to create turnovers. They're going to get their hands in the passing lanes. It's going to be a physical game. You can't expect the refs to call, you know, fouls 94 feet. That's just not how it's going to go. Um, that's not how you want it to go. We don't want to get in a free throw shooting contest. Um, but yeah, they're very fundamentally sound. They're well coached. Um, and I expect it to be a really good game. They're in the front row. You know, Caitlin, you've said all along, by the time, especially you get to the second round, every game is dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, you've re reiterated that. We mm -hmm. saw Ohio State lost mm -hmm. day on their home court. You guys have been through that before. Is there any key when you're sort of the favored team, but there's a lot of pressure on you to sort of <clears throat> make sure the, the underdog, if you will, mm -hmm. doesn't get a foothold in the game, or do you think about it from that standpoint? I think coming out with a strong start will be really important for us, but I think that goes for any game. Um, you know, you want to come out and set the tone, but also our group has played in quite a few March Madness games where we didn't come out and set the tone, and we were able to take a breath and respond, and I think understanding, like, we're not going to win by 25 points. That's not what this is at this point. You know, it's going to come down to single possessions. You have to execute um, possessions. You need to get... O boards, we need to not turn the ball over. Um, little things like that, and that's kind of what Coach bluter has been preaching. But, yeah, I think our group knows better than anybody. This is a game that is it's going to be close. Every team that you play from here on out is a top 25 team. Um, doesn't really matter what number is next to your name. Um, it's going to be a great battle, and that's what makes this tournament so fun. And you got to come ready to play. And like Kate said earlier, they do remind us of Georgia in a, in a, little, in a way. And... Georgia gave us a great battle. We only won by, I think, six points, or it was it was two points with like a minute to go. So, just shows how how important singular possessions are in, in these type of games. Mike, uh, Mike Halas from the Cedar Rapids Gazette for Caitlin. Uh, with the 13 days between games, uh, that's a long time in basketball. Uh, was it any harder keeping your mind relaxed, uh, mostly? Ignoring the outside world, uh, all the talk about you, and just everything that you know surrounds you. <laughs> um, honestly, it was nice to have a couple of weeks off, especially after playing three games in three days at the Big Ten tournament. And um, I don't think it's like any different than what I've experienced the, over the last two years. I think I've been able to kind of you know step away and focus on my business and what that is, and that's on helping this team win. And um, certainly I know that spotlight's there, certainly I know that pressure's there, but that's not anything you ever shy away from. I wouldn't want it any other way. And um, I think it's something this team has deserved and really earned over the course of the last two years, obviously with our run in March Madness, but I'm not sure a lot of people coming into this year would have thought we would be a one seed in this tournament and had the, had the year that we did with Lucy Mon and McKenna. I feel like a lot of people on our team has really stepped up into, into roles that maybe they didn't have last year, and I'm really proud of them. So I think the biggest thing, you know, our team just needs to remember is – you know, we worked for this. We've earned it. Sure, there's pressure, but that's not anything you shy away from. Like, you know, we've performed to that level all year long. Um, and, you know, these are some of the, mo the most fun moments of basketball right now. So just enjoy that and, and continue to rise to the occasion. 
Hello, good afternoon. Um, Remy Verano for the French TV. A uh, question to Caitlin. I know we're still in the middle of the, of the college tournament, mm -hmm. but um, thinking about the, the years uh, to come, about your future, what kind of a champion and what kind of a person and of a personality would you love to, to become? Oh, oh, gee, you asked the hard questions. You Impressive. can't Google me on this, it doesn't exist uh, yet, so. <laughs> Did you Google it last night? <laughs> okay, I don't know, I think I don't know, I think the way I've gone about my college career is how I want to continue to live the rest of my life, whether it's playing professional basketball, whether it's, you know, my dreams outside of basketball. I think that's what has allowed me so much success as a basketball player is everything I do is the same way I live my personal life. I want to give a full effort. I want to, you know, rely on a team and other people around me. I know not everything can be done by myself, and I have a lot of people that support me, whether it's my teammates, whether it's my coaches, whether it's my family. and. Um, you know, I have a lot of goals and aspirations in basketball and enjoying that. But at the end of the day, basketball isn't like the end all be all for me. I know, you know, I told my mom earlier this week, I know I can hold my head high, whatever happens in this tournament, because, you know, I've given my heart and soul to this program and so have my teammates and I've loved every single second of wearing Iowa across my chest. And, um, I think that goes for everything that I do in my life. I do it with, you know, 110% effort and, um, maybe at times that's bad, but you know, that's just kind of how I go about my life and. I think that's what you know. I'm going to continue to do as I become a professional working adult, um, and I think it's it would be the same for any other normal individual too. In the middle there, Chantel Jennings with the Athletic. Kate, question for you. Caitlin had some nice praise for what she's learned from you over the last few years. I'm mm -hmm. curious if we can turn the tables a little bit. Obviously, you're two years older, had yeah. some college experience mm -hmm. before she was here, but over the last four years, what have you learned from Caitlin? Yeah, well, great question. Oh, gosh, mm, Caitlin, she close your ears. Anything. Just <laughs> Um, no, I've learned a lot from Caitlin, and I feel really grateful that I've gotten to spend four years with her. Um, she just has come in since her freshman year and made everybody better around her, and I think that's what the greats do is they raise a level of competition every single day in practice. Um, and she had goals, and uh, I hadn't really, you know, like typically I was looking up to people who were older than me, and then, you know, somebody younger coming in with such a, you know, fiery mentality and wanting to win and I, I just loved it and you know sometimes you don't really think about looking up to somebody who's younger than you but I always you know admired her even since the day she stepped on campus because I knew she wanted to win and I I would take somebody like Caitlin who's fiery you know might snap on people over somebody who doesn't give a crap you know I would take that all day um, and so yeah and Caitlin's been there for me through so many aspects of my life mainly off the court and on the court and uh you know, she's just always going to have my back, and I appreciate that. And uh, I, I've said this before, but I, I want Caitlin in my foxhole. You know, I want her, if, if things go bad, you know, I want her to be right next to me because I know she's going to have my back, and I know she's going to give 110% and whatever it is. So um, I do really appreciate that about her. Hello, Lucas Tua for French Television again. Uh, Thank question you for, for Caitlin. Uh, for you, what are the, the priorities about uh, the future and the development of women's sports? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the first thing is, it's hard to kind of think about the future when I'm in this moment right now. So I would say like that's my main focus is being here, being in this moment. Obviously, I know the future is going to come very quickly within the next month. And um, I think for myself, I think the biggest thing, like I've said all, even throughout this year, is like I still feel like the, my game can grow so much. I feel like I can still improve a lot, but... Like you said, like I think women's sports in general are growing so much, and that's so cool. As you see, it's like all over the world. Women's sports are really on the rise, whether it's women's basketball, whether it's soccer, whether it's volleyball. You can go down down the line of every you know, women's sporting event that is growing. The attendance numbers are growing. The viewership is growing. And if I can be a small part of that, you know, that's really special, and that's really unique. And I want to do whatever I can to you know, help move that along and help inspire young girls to maybe you know, dream to do whatever they want to do. And... Um, I guess that's the biggest thing is continue to, you know, enjoy these moments and smile and inspire young people to, you know, want to be just like us because they're going to be the next generation that keeps continuing to move this thing forward. Holly. Holly Rowe, ESPN. Hi. Um, just wondered, you, you both referenced being hard on each other and helping each other raise the level of competition. I can remember when Beth yells at me to get better at my job <laughs> frequently. Can you share an anecdote with us of, a fight you remember or a moment you remember that's like, come on, Kate, you got to do this, or come on, Caitlin, you got to do this. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Do you remember any? I'm trying to think. 
summer scrimmages, me and Kay are never on the same team. So never. <laughs> there's a lot in summer. We always play pickup like three times a week in the summer, and like me and Kate are never on the same team because might be unfair for the other team. I'm <laughs> no, just kidding, but <laughs> like me and Kate get into it, and like we bicker back and forth. There's never we don't ever punch anyone or <laughs> punch each sure. other. Um, but like we'll go back and forth, and I think that just speaks to like how badly we want it. Like it's a summer scrimmage, really. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter who wins. It doesn't matter who scores what. But like we want our teams to win that badly that it gets super competitive. And it's not, honestly not even just me and Kate. Like all the girls get super competitive, but. Um, I, I would say we're probably the two biggest culprits and like it's like Kate's team versus Caitlin's team so that's kind of how it goes but um, once we like step off the court and walk down after practice is over from the practice gym like it's all fun and games like we just laugh we giggle and I think that's the best thing about being a competitor you can separate the two things and um, that's what I love about Kate is like I hate when she beats me at things and she definitely hates when I beat her at things and that's how it should be that's what pushes you to get better and um, if you don't have that competition, I don't really know how much you're going to be able to grow and, and improve in your own ways. We've got time for two more questions. We'll go here in the front and then to Scott Dockerman. Uh, 10 rounds, U92 radio is a question for Caitlin. So I couldn't help yesterday but notice the uh, you know, large amount of people that wait for all of you guys to get signatures, pictures, meet you. You know, When you look back at your time in Iowa, I know you said you're focused on the game, but mm -hmm. with it being your last game, what do you hope – your legacy has been through your four years here? Well, I think, I hope we inspired a lot of people. I hope we brought a lot of people joy, whether it's young girls, young boys, older men and women. Um, and I think we have, I think we've touched generations across the board. And I think also um, you'll see our legacy, whether it's me and Kate's or whether it's the other girls in the locker room, I hope it can, you continue to see it for years and years to come. I hope you know, fans continue to support this program. Obviously, they have before, you know, I arrived on campus, before Kate arrived on campus, but obviously it's on a whole different level than it is now, and I hope they continue to support this program because what Coach Bluter has been able to build here has been really special, and, you know, we've been lucky enough to be a part of it and have a lot of wins with her, but, you know, there's been a lot of girls in the locker room that have contributed this year that maybe it's their first time and they're going to be here next year, so I think continuing to support them is very important, but also I hope there's a lot of young boys and girls that grow up to, you know, play basketball, play soccer, play whatever they want, and they can say, like, the Iowa women's basketball team was a team that really inspired me to go after my goals and my dreams to do what I want to do. And Because I think me and Kate would say, like, we had those people growing up. And I know for Kate, that's exactly what it was. She grew up with an Iowa women's basketball poster glued to her bedroom ceiling. That's how much she loved this program and wanted to be a part of it. So um, I think it's like we've got to live out our dream, and I hope at the same time we're able to – inspire others to dream too. Scott, last question. Kind of along those same lines for both of you, what's it, this is the last, tomorrow's the last time you're walking out of Carver Hawkeye Arena with that uniform on. What's it meant to you to have that, to, be, to wear that for your duration of your career? I feel really lucky and honored mm -hmm. to be able to wear Iowa across my chest every single day. And uh, it's, like Kaylin said, it was a dream of mine as a little girl um, to play for Coach Bluter. And to spend six years here, I mean, that's rare nowadays. And uh, I mean, it just is. But I feel really lucky that I've had the opportunity. I mean, I tore my ACL my freshman year. And it, it just kind of led me to this moment right now. And you don't really know why you tear your ACL in the moment. But I got another year to play here with these girls right now. And I just feel super grateful. And um, there's just a sense of pride that you get whenever you put on your uniform, run out to 15,000 screaming fans. and. My family comes to every single game and to get to see them in the stands and then do that with your best friends every single day, I just feel extremely honored. And I, I could never say thank you enough to Coach Bluter and the coaching staff for giving me the opportunity. Yeah, I would say all the same. It's crazy how fast my, my four years have gone. I feel like it was just freshman year and I was playing in front of nobody. And now we're running out to sold out crowds, whether we're here or whether we're on the road. And um, you know, I don't know if I would have been able to have the success that I do and that our team does if I wasn't playing for Coach Bluter. She's really allowed me to be myself. Um, she's never taken anything away from me and held me back from anything. Um, and I'm really grateful for her. I'm grateful for all our coaches, but also I've had really good teammates that have allowed me to be me too. And, um, you know, I wanted to play for this school because I love the state of Iowa. I love representing the state of Iowa. Um, my family was really close. I don't think my family has missed many games in my career. And, um, I remember running out to our first sold-out crowd, and like I got the chills, and now I get to do that every single night, and that's never anything that has 
got old. Um, and I think, I don't know, I mean, it'll take a while for this to set in of this really being my last game in Carver Hawkeye Arena. Um, but just really grateful and thankful. Thankful to our fans, the way they support women's basketball um, and want the game to grow. And, you know, I know when I take off the jersey, whenever my last game is, I can, you know, hold my head high and reflect back on a lot of great memories inside this place. All right, Kate and Caitlin, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, we'll go right to questions for Coach Bluter. Kyle? Kyle Huseman, Hawkeye Report. We asked uh, Caitlin and Kate if there were any uh, teams that you guys have faced that, that kind of are similar to West Virginia. I think it was uh, Illinois because of their guard play, Georgia, uh, Penn State, and Ohio State. Uh, first off, do you agree with those teams? And then kind of is there anything that you can take away from those previous matchups that you pi point out to your team about, hey, we did something well in this game that, that West Virginia is going to do, and here's some things we didn't do well in that game that, that West Virginia can do? Yeah, I, I agree with Ohio State. I think they're similar to this team and the pressing. Um, and, you know, we handled Ohio State's press well. We handled Penn State's press well. So that's going to be the goal tomorrow because they are very, very good. Um, very good at creating. I mean, they force 24 turnovers a game. Um, we cannot afford to turn the ball over that many times. They count on it, and they get easy scores off those turnovers. So we have to do a good job of taking care of the ball. Right here in the front. Hi, Tanner Mads, U92 Radio. Uh, you know, obviously the goal will be to not turn the ball over, but, you know, many teams go in with that mindset, and they still – get turned over. If West Virginia is able to turn you over that many times, is there other things that you can do to kind of make up for those turnovers? I mean, threes are greater than two. You know, I mean, that's really right. Like, it's about possessions. And if you turn the ball over, you're in trouble. I mean, possessions are so important. Um, but, you know, if we control possessions, we're the number one team in the country in points per possession. So uh, we have to do a good job on the boards, and we have to do a good job valuing the ball. Uh, Luke Blaine, Daily Athenaeum. You've played uh, two teams from the Big 12 in Kansas State and Iowa State. Is there anything that you can take away from those matchups that you might try to emulate in this one, or is it a completely new challenge? I think it's a new challenge. I, I mean, uh, you know, we played those teams such a long time ago. I've watched their films against West Virginia, but again, those were a long time ago. I think our team is different. The last time we beat Kansas State, we didn't have Hannah Stolke. She wasn't available. She was unhealthy at that point. So. Um, you know, hopefully having her um, will help us. Kyle? We <laughs> talked with the West Virginia head coach, Mark Kellogg, and he mentioned that he feels like they're a team that they can play a slower game if they need to. They can, they can play a little bit faster as well. Is that, is that something that you see from them, that they can kind of do both of those things? They can excel if, if you find yourselves in either type of game? Oh, I agree. I think that they can change up their press to do whatever they want, speed you up or slow you down. So uh, they do a really good job with that. Over here on the left, Steve, just a second. Steve Silverman, Ivy Hoops Online. Coach, I think uh, during the first round, 31 out of 32 higher seeded teams won. Meanwhile, on the men's side, you see upsets happening and all this hoopla over that. Um, 
and of, of those 31 teams, 16 of them played on their home court. Do you think it's time for the women's tournament to reconsider awarding two home games to the top 16 teams? I don't think so. I, I don't think we're there yet. Um, we tried it. And I've been around long enough that we did try that for a while. It was very unsuccessful, and that's why we abandoned it. Went back to this. We tried eight games at a neutral site, um, or eight teams at a neutral site, and it didn't work. Um, I think it is a huge advantage to the top 16. But maybe they deserve it because they worked on, you know, did it during the year. So maybe they deserve it. You're going to give up a crowd like this and a television, you know, experience like this in favor of going to a neutral place? You know, I don't think so. Scott, uh, one second. Hi, Scott Dockerman with The Athletic. I wanted to ask you about Kate Martin's impact on this program since the day she walked in. She talked about learning from Megan, learning how to become a good teammate when she had an ACL, to now where she seems to be one of the greatest captains you've ever had. Mm -hmm. uh, what's been her impact and what's her legacy? She truly is one of the best captains I've ever had. I mean, I put Sam Logic up there, Kate Martin. Um, what makes Kate so tremendous is she works so hard all the time. So she's, de you know, by, she demonstrates, you know, the, the level of play that you want out on the court. But she's also communicating. She's our best communicator on the floor, whether she's pumping people up or whether she's communicating, you know, defensive calls and skills, that sort of thing. So um, she's the first person that will hold people accountable. Um, and she's also the first person that will pat everybody on the back when they need it. And she builds people up. I think that's the biggest thing about a leader is when you can make the people around you better. And Kate Martin has done that. And uh, she's going to be a fabulous coach. I'm not going to want to coach against her because uh, she's going to be really, really good in time. Aaron Parker, U92 Radio. Um, obviously not a ton of time to prep for West Virginia. I'm sure you've been doing it for a couple of days now. How much of of a focus point is transition defense, and how tough is that to practice transition defense in just a kind of a one or two day window? Yeah, you're not gonna practice that today and be ready for it. I mean, you have to practice that all year long. Um, it has to be part of who you are. I mean, it, you just are not gonna get better in an hour and a half practice of something like that. So it's something you better start working on last June, July, August, October, you know. Kyle. We talked about you know how West Virginia's defense can lead into their offense, but when they get into the half court, just what things do you see from them on their half court offense that could be a challenge for you guys? Just how fast they are going downhill. I mean, they're extremely fast. Um, you know, Jordan and JJ are incredible. Um, they, you know, I think feed off each other really well, but they are very quick going downhill. I think Lauren Fields is an excellent spot up three point shooter. So I mean, you got your post Kylie that can come out and hit threes too. So. Um, you know, defensively, it's tough to match up with them just because of their speed. Scott? Lisa, sometimes when you're going through the moment, it's hard to stop and smell the roses and think about the things. But uh, you've coached through a ton of senior days, seen a lot of great leaders here exit the program. How do the ones on this team, you know, how do you feel knowing that tomorrow is the last time they're going to wear Iowa, an Iowa uniform on this court? and the impact that they've made, which is, seems to be obviously profound. Yeah, their impact has been amazing. And it's not only an impact on our program, it's an impact on the entire state of Iowa. It's an entire, you know, our community, our university. I think women's basketball nationally, I truly believe that this team has elevated the play, the enthusiasm, the excitement for women's basketball across the country. I am not thinking about tomorrow being their last game. I, I can't. Like, if you start thinking about that and focusing on that, you're not focusing on the task at hand. So that's something I'll think about after the game, but it's not something that I really want to prepare myself for now. Uh, right here in the front. Here in the front. Uh, Tanner Matt, U92. I asked uh, Caitlin this right before, you know, when it is all said and done, what would you define her legacy as, whether for this program or you touched upon it, the state or women's basketball in general? For, for Kate Martin specifically? Uh, Caitlin, sorry. Caitlin. Oh, Caitlin. I mean, Caitlin, I mean, goodness, she's the face of women's basketball in, I mean, across the country right now. And so absolutely she's elevated this game. And 
I mean, she really creates a lot of buzz. A lot, you know, whether it's good or whether it's bad, it's, it's a buzz out there. And uh, I think she's taught, you know, people that they can be passionate about this game, competitive about this game, and they don't have to hide their feelings. I think there's a whole lot of little boys and girls that are playing basketball right now because of her, because of watching her play and her inspiring, you know, the next generation of, of basketballers. Go ahead, right here. Hey, Coach, forgive me, I was in the locker room, so if I ask something that's repetitive, um, I, I apologize for that. But I was asking Caitlin about this. When you're a real guard-dominated team, and I'm not shortchanging your post game at all, but you've got so much experience on guards, is it, is it easier in some ways to prepare for another team that's guard-dominant, or does it really make much difference? I don't know if it makes a whole lot of difference. I haven't thought about that. Um, and I do think our post play was good yesterday. I mean, even without, with, with Hannah going 0 for 2 and not playing many minutes, we were 11 for 16 from the field uh, with our post play. So I think they did a nice job. Um, but, I mean, certainly when you talk about Iowa, you talk about our guards right now. Steve? Steve Silverman, Ivy Hoops Online. Coach, yesterday in the Princeton-West Virginia game, Princeton actually had fewer turnovers than West Virginia in the first half and more points off of turnovers. And, uh, more fast break points, and we know what happened in the second half. So how important will it be for your team not to play a great 10 minutes uh, against that pressure, not a great 20 minutes, but a great 40 minutes? Yeah, I think every game you play th this time of year, you're playing a great p against great people. I mean, West Virginia has a 21 net. I mean, they are a really good basketball team. I think that they're um, – Underseated or whatever you want to say about that. I think there should be uh, really like a seven or a six right now or a five, you know, possibly. I mean, uh, I'm not on the committee, so I can't make those calls, but I was really surprised that they were an eight seed. And I'm th sure they were, and I, they have something to prove about it. But um, I think anybody you play now, you've got to be locked in for 40 minutes or, you know, you're going to go home. So that's the goal. And, and you're right. They, you know, I think it hurt when Jordan got into foul trouble a little bit in the first half. I think you know she's the front of that press, the kind of two-headed monster up there, and she's that, you know, one of the one of the principal parts of that. Scott, I wanted to ask you about physical play and, and the challenges it could present for you if if uh, the depending on the way it's called. And I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying yeah. like balls and strikes. Um, if it's um, if it's called loose and there's not a lot of fouls, um, how do you how do you keep Caitlin focused and not maybe getting into? You know, yesterday she just seemed to be a little mm -hmm. out of character, and yeah. how do you keep her kind of focused and not worrying about other yeah. things? Yeah, um, Caitlin and I had a really good talk this morning. I think she's going to be great tomorrow. I really do. I have full faith in that. Um, she got frustrated with herself with the situation last night, and she can't. She's too much of a veteran to let that bother her. She knows that a lot of times whistles are fall, you know, swallowed this time of year. But hey, there was 57 free throws shot between West Virginia and Princeton. That's a lot of free throws and a lot of calls. So that game, they didn't really swallow their whistle, in my opinion. Got time for one or two more. Any, any other questions? Go ahead. Coach, you mentioned just how tough these games are, really, from the first round. But definitely, I feel like the second round now are incredibly tough. And, and Caitlin mentioned, you, you can't go into this game thinking, hey, you're, we're going to win comfortably. It is going to go down, possibly last mm -hmm. possession. The confidence, I guess, you have in, in the way you guys execute at the end of games, because that seems to be a huge difference maker at, at this time of the year. Yeah, I mean, we practice our end of game situations. I mean, often, uh, I'm not going to say every day, but often. We did it in the shoot around yesterday. Um, you know, I just feel like, with a player like Caitlin, you're never completely out of a game because uh, she can do some amazing things at the end of games. We've all seen it over and over again. So, um, but yeah, I mean, end of game situations are very important, both offensively and defensively. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Coach. Thanks.